Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is working as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. But if you've seen the show, you know this is not about my day job. It's about my friends Frank and Mary uh, and their goal, which is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Hudson, that means right here, they don't want to move away. They like it here. And so the point of this show is to talk about the people that you need to know and the programs that you need to know about uh, in order to do exactly that, in order to stay, your, stay in your home and just live in your house until you die. So my wonderful uh, co-host, John Parent, joined me um, last year um, because and most of you folks know John because he's been a selectman now. This is his sixth year. Uh, and he's been able to find a lot of great guests that we could talk to about kind of current issues and things that are going on here in Hudson. But today we decided that we would just talk to each other. And I'm going to talk to him about what's going on uh, with the Board of Selectmen and with upcoming you know, the town meeting that's coming up fairly soon. Uh, and then he's going to talk to me about um, reverse mortgages and, and some other issues that are directly related to staying at home. Because I, I, I'm doing my seminar this month. Um, which is on um, the Hudson Cable is about planning to stay home. And, and, and I get a lot of questions from people with issues around that, those questions. How exactly do you do that? How do you use your home in order to stay at home? Which is really kind of the goal. So John, um, to start, um, thanks very much for uh, doing this. And, sure. and let, let's just talk about um, what's going on? What's going on with the Board of Selectmen? And, you know, I know we talked a little bit about it ahead of time. What is going on at uh, town meeting this year? Because that's going to be coming up fairly soon. And we talked about, you know, ha really talking the, to the issues that may be being addressed at that time. And I know certainly people are going to have an interest even now in what you're thinking about in terms of the budget. I know, you know, it's so for so many folks, um, last year when COVID hit, you know, people were saying, well, you know, we're going to be okay for this year, which is like right now, but next year is going to be murder. And now you guys are actually starting to look, look at next year. So all, any, any or all of those issues, what's going on? Okay. Well, thank you, Arthur. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the budget. Uh, and, and almost more importantly, I, I want to uh, reference two Warren articles in particular. Uh, that are, begun, are coming up in May. Uh, and I also, I want to save some time uh, because I know that you've touched on a lot of legal issues, uh, obviously about staying in your home. Uh, but I also want to give you some time uh, to talk about some of the practical issues uh, like financing, home, home improvements or uh, ongoing maintenance on the house. Uh, so let me start and please stop me um, so that I have an opportunity to spend a little time asking you some questions as well. Uh, let me touch on the, the uh, budget first. Um, we've been through uh, all of the departments with the exception of the school department, which we always uh, give as much time as possible. Uh, so they're the last ones. Uh, and the school department historically uh, always cooperates with the town uh, and they'll come in at a percentage increase, I'm sure that we can live with. Uh, so what's happened, um, what's going on with the budget, what are we and what were we uh, concerned about? And the primary concern was not so much our revenue that we generate. You know, over 80% of our revenue comes from property taxes and local receipts. And when I say local receipts, I'm talking about things like excise tax, uh, water bill, sewer bill, uh, those type of receipts. So about 82% of the money that we receive comes from those two primary sources. The next uh, largest source is the state. And the state uh, comp comprises about 17%. Uh, of our total budget, so it's a. I, I didn't realize it was that high. That's a that's a lot. That's it's a, a significant account, and of course that in, includes uh, two components primarily. One is the majority of that is for the school, and then we as a town make up the difference. And then the other part of it is what they call general uh, funding, which are dollars 
that the town can use uh, for whatever purpose it wants and make part of their budget. Um, so our big concern was how much is that state amount of 17% going down? Uh, and we were very pleased to find out that the governor has proposed level funding. Uh, so once again, uh, it looks like we're going to be safe uh, for one more year. Um, the uh, What we did prior to knowing what the governor was going to do is we in fact cut our budget by 2%. So we had a budget projection, not understanding what kind of dollars we we're gonna get from the state, we cut it by 2%. So, and we left that. After we found out we were gonna get level funding, we said, let's leave the budget at the minus two, which brings us down to 1.7% increase this year over last year. And if you look at prior budgets, 1.7% is a pretty good number. Uh, and, and of course, that's reflective of what's going to happen with your taxes as well. Uh, and we always want to keep that in mind. So uh, I want to move on and I want to talk about two uh, Warren art articles that we have that are coming up at town meeting. And our town meeting this year is going to be the first Saturday in May. And we're going to have another outside uh, town meeting. It will probably be at 12 o'clock uh, and it's going to be in the same location uh, that it was last year uh, and that's at the high school. So the two articles that I want to zero in on, uh, one of which I recommended uh, to the board and the board unanimously uh, agreed with me and that was to change the name uh, of the board of selectmen to the select board. And the reason that I did that uh, is, number one, uh, anything that we can do to show our support for diversity, uh, I, I'm in favor of. And, I, and obviously the other select board members are in favor of that as well. And it's not that the name didn't have a long history attached to it. Uh, it's been around for some 400 years. Uh, in fact, in 1623, the then town of Dorchester was the first town to establish town government. And what they did is they selected nine men to represent the town on a day-to-day -day basis. And thus the term uh, for selectmen. It, it, it also, it, it shows, I think, our willingness to uh, emphasize diversity. And we also recently had a uh, statement that the town issued, which we all pledged to. And, and that was to do whatever we can to recognize that discrimination uh, is there. Uh, and we want to make sure that whatever we do uh, brings the amount of discrimination down to uh, as low a level as we possibly can. So I, at a I, recent think report, I think it's terrific. I think it's great. You know, and, and it just I, as you were saying this, John, I was thinking. I was thinking back to now. I, I haven't been around for that long, but like forty years, and I'm trying to remember if I ever remember a Hudson woman selectman. Or there select was. There, there was. There was. Yeah, you've got to go back um, a good twenty years or more, uh, and, and I wish I could remember her name, but I can't off the top of my head. But yes, we we have had one uh, woman. Um, but, and, it, and they've become more, more, you know, women have become more prominent among select, uh, select boards. Oh, you no, know, I know about it. no question about it. Right, uh, just... So anything that we can do to promote uh, that type of diversity. And quite frankly, that the uh, name change was an easy one uh, because it has absolutely no effect whatsoever uh, on the job uh, of the board. So everything remains the same. It's just a, uh, an indication of our willingness uh, to try to do what we can, uh, where we can. Uh, so that is a Warren article, and that has to be approved uh, by the town. Uh, and the reason for that is it's a change to our charter. And the charter uh, was enacted by the legislature, or approved by the legislature, 
uh, back in 1976. So in order to change that, uh, we need a vote of the town uh, and, and we also need to send it back to the legislature uh, to approve our change. And the second and probably even more important issue to me uh, at this point, because I'm also the chairman of the search committee uh, looking for a new executive assistant. Uh, and of course, our executive assistant is essentially a town manager. Um, I was on the board seven years ago uh, and chairman of the search committee back then uh, when ultimately uh, we found town, Tom Moses, uh, who turned out to be just an outstanding uh, executive assistant. He's retiring. We're going to miss him. Uh, so we're in the process of trying to find uh, a new manager. And here's the problem. I've been on four search committees. Uh, two looking for executive assistants, uh, one looking for a superintendent of schools uh, in Hudson, and another one uh, looking for the superintendent uh, at Assabet. And the two, two have a residency requirement, the other two do not. The one with the resi residency requirement is the town of Hudson. In our charter, it states that the town manager must be a resident of Hudson within nine months of seeking office. And this has become just a major, major deterrent uh, to finding qualified people. The problem is people don't want to move unless they have to. And I'm not talking about uh, if we found a, a manager from out of state, of course, we're going to ask them to move. Uh, if we found a good manager who was maybe at the far end of the Cape, something like that, of course, we're, we're going to ask the individual to move. The problem is we have had interested people who qualify, one in particular who is a good candidate, and it turns out that individual lives two miles from our town hall. <laughs> it, it, it just makes no sense. You know, as in, in talking with you a while back, I, I, you made the mention that you could live in Hudson and be further than that. So it really makes no sense. Uh, there was an obvious reason for doing it at the time in 76, and I think the obvious reason is the feeling that a, a person has more at stake uh, if he lives in the town. Uh, but times have changed significantly. Number one, you do not have to be a resident of the town in order to be part of the community. We have 15 department managers in town. Nine of them do not live in Hudson. And I'm just going to give you three examples of why you don't have to live in town uh, in order to be part of the community. Number one, our school superintendent, Marco Rodriguez. Marco lives in Worcester. If anybody is part of this community, it's Marco. I mean, think about the number of individuals he deals with on a daily basis. Number two, a very familiar name, Kelly Kalo. Kelly is our Department of Health Manager. She lives in Maynard. And third, our Department of Public Works Director, Eric Ryder, lives right on the border of New Hampshire. And these are three individuals by name who are extremely well known in the town and are very involved in the town. So they're great examples of why you don't have to be a resident in order to be part of the community. The, the next thing is we, we have to understand that this is a three year at a time job. All of our executive assistants sign a contract. Our contract historically and currently is a three year contract. Now, if they do the job, uh, in all likelihood, that contract is going to be renewed uh, for another three years. But there's no guarantee of that. So we're asking people to move 
who are reasonably close, close to the town to take a chance that they're going to have their contract renewed. Again, very difficult thing to do. And probably one of the most difficult uh, parts of moving are those uh, individuals who might be interested, but they have children in school. And no matter what your age, uh, you, you always remember the high school days. And, and imagine pulling your kids you know, out of school who are starting their high school years or are in the middle you know, of their high school years. Very, very difficult thing to do. And again, you're moving them potentially within miles of, of where you, you're, you live already uh, in proximity to the town. So it really makes very, very little sense. Uh, another issue uh, is the potential manager uh, may have a spouse who lives the maximum distance from their job that they want to be. And if you were to ask them to move, it might put that spouse in a position where he or she, uh, depending on who it is, may find it that much more difficult to get to work. Uh, and finally, I think there's a new impact, and that's the financial impact. Things are different today uh, financially. I'm going to find out prior to town meeting how many homes we have on the market that, let's say, are in a, a, a range that might be attractive to somebody moving in. Let's, let's say 500,000 to 600,000. And I think what I'm going to find is that there's going to be a handful uh, of houses that are in that range. The inventory just simply is not there. So with everything else in consideration, we might also be asking that individual to move. And here's 10 houses that you got to pick from. I mean, it's it, it's really a uh, it, it's an inordinate uh, request. So here's the procedure. This will be a Warren article at town meeting and that first Saturday in May. We need to get a super majority vote. We need two thirds of the town to recommend that the Warren article passes. Once that happens, we also have to put it on the ballot the following week and the town has to vote on it. And then thirdly, assuming that we get the vote a week later, then it goes to the legislature. And the legislature is the least of my concerns because quite frankly, there's just no good reason uh, why the legislature would not you know, approve something like this, particularly where it's the will of the people and it really has no impact uh, on any government business or the way that you do business. Uh, we are only one of four, uh, to the best of my knowledge, that even have a residency requirement. And that's out of 351 communities, you know, in the state of Mass. So uh, I'm going to need some help. Uh, and the help has got to come from the town uh, residents who go to our town meeting, and, and then that following week, uh, go to the ballot and, and help us. Uh, and, and I'm not saying that we would not ask somebody to move. All I'm asking is that you allow the board to have the privilege of determining whether or not it's necessary for that person uh, to move to Hudson. Uh, and, and in most cases, unless they're from out of state or something like that, it makes very little sense uh, to do that. So that, that's my plea. Uh, and maybe there's- John, that's a, that's, that's a pretty, compelling, pretty compelling argument. Let me, let me just, and, and, and I suppose, especially now, you're just talking about, like it's for the citizens of, Hutt, of, of, of Hudson, it's really about helping yourselves. It's about, you know, that, that, it, that, it, that, it, that executive assistance, a big job, you want the top guy and the notion that you have to kind of, you know, leave you know, one hand behind your back because 
there's a whole set of players you can't even talk to, even if you can offer them the comparable money, you know, that, 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 and especially in today's households where so many people have got two spouses working and they're living in the middle to be asking, you know, both spouses basically to be, you know, to be going, to be moving. That's kind of like, like a blast from, it's like the select woman, you know, it's like, it's like a blast from the past, you know, yeah. and it's something that you really just needs to change. But having said that, so are the board of selectmen unanimously in favor of this or is there, an, are there, is there any, you know, significant argument opposed to this? There, yes, the board, uh, select board is 100% uh, in favor of this. There is no argument, really. I mean, the only argument that you could possibly make would be that argument about being more of more attuned to the town if right. you happen to live here. But uh, if you look at positions like um, the three that I mentioned uh, and the uh, executive assistant, when, when you're dealing with people who live in town on a daily basis, after a period of time, People get to know you, you get to know the townspeople through all the various boards and interactions that we have. Um, you very quickly become a part of the community. And the mere fact that you don't own a home in that community has very little to do. In fact, that'd go the opposite way. You can live in Hudson and not know a soul and not be the part of the community in any way, shape, or form. So it, it really, it just makes very little sense, right. you know, not to do it. It really does. Well, that's, I think that's a great summary. And so, it, but it, and I think, but I think, as you say, it's important for folks to realize they need to be doing two things in order for this to happen, right? Yeah. They need to show up at town meeting and vote, vote for this, but then they also have to, you know, vote at the election. Yep. And, and, and otherwise you're kind of out of luck. So it, I think it makes sense to be ramp. I, the reason why I asked about whether there was any opposition was I know one of the things that you and I had talked about was if there were any particular things that are coming up at town meeting in May, we have several shows between now and then it would be great if there were issues that where you think there may be a real kind of a pro and a con that we can use this as an opportunity to air those, right? Because I think that's one of the really valuable pieces that this show can play is that now there is there is no where print media is so minimal and 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 therefore the reporters who are asking both sides and writing a story about it are so are so minimal that this is one really the, the only vehicle to really have allow people to hear kind of a pro and a con at the same time so they can really make up their minds you know but it sounds like in this issue this has become clear to folks, you know, that this is just, yes. It just makes no sense. And I do, I have to mention one other thing. There was a uh, newspaper article that came out uh, yesterday morning uh, about the search committee. And I did indicate uh, when I was talking to the uh, representative from the newspaper that we did have 34 candidates uh, for the position. And a lot of people are gonna say, well, wait a minute, what's the problem if you got 34 candidates? Well, the problem is 17 of the 34 did not meet our basic qualification. <laughs> so that's that's the problem. That's the They're problem. pretty much yes, yeah. That pretty much answers the question. And, and, but I, then, it, and then we also put the remainder into tier one and two, and the tier two really were not quite the quality that we were looking for. So right. there's a problem. Right, that's a genuine problem, and I think people also appreciate the. Uh, the update on the budget, because I know that there was a tremendous amount of, you know, just fear about, no especially question. among these folks, among among the Frank and Marys here, who for whom, as I've often mentioned, for many for many of my clients, next to the food bill, the next unless they've got serious medical problems, the next biggest bill is the tax bill. Yeah, you know, and they're and they're and they've got a valuable house, and be, and the trouble is, John, you guys have, have made Hudson much too attractive for people. And so the values keep going up, right? Okay. Everybody's houses, right? And so that it, 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 I mean, it's been quite something to watch. It's been amazing to watch over the last five to 10 years. I mean, if, if you ever want a, a case study in, to me, now, and once again, as an outsider, you know, I married into Hudson, but I'm not from Hudson, right? 
Yeah. But if you ever wanted a case study in in the effect that a changed downtown can have on a town, yeah, that's Hudson. Very true. That's Hudson, Very right? True. And but as a result of that, you've got you know the inventory is really low. You got a ton of a lot of young people wanting to move into Hudson, yeah. right? But as a result, people are just you know the, 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 you, when you sell, that's terrific. But if you're just staying put, yeah. <laughs> it's really tough. Now, John, I know that we had, we had talked a little bit about uh, about having a, a little discussion, and maybe we can do that at the next at our next um, for our next show, right? About these issues, as I had mentioned to you, the seminar that I did this month was all about planning to stay home, and of course, the problem with the seminars that I do now is that they're all they're all done by by remote, you know. So there's nobody who can ask a question, but I always say call if you've got a question. And a number of people did specifically about this kind of ambiguity between, you know, how does a home improvement line of credit work? How does a reverse mortgage work? You know, what, what are my options if I really want to be using the equity in my house to stay home, which is what so many people do. So maybe we can do that. Maybe I'll take, do, do that in, a, in a, a segment at one of our later shows. But John, thank, thank you so much for this. I really appreciate the, uh, I think a lot of folks really appreciate this update. And uh, you know, think think about other you know if there are particular issues, or to the, to the folks who are watching, if there are particular issues that are coming up that you think are going to be a town meeting that you'd like to really hear a pro and con. This is a great place to do it. So, yeah. well, so, I, can, I can assure you that with the number of articles we have, there'll be several uh, that that will have both uh, pro and con. Uh, so let, yeah. So let's let's so let's kind of you know you, you well, you're the we'll selectman. You you tell me, and we'll kind of figure out who those people should be. So folks, I hope you enjoy this show. Uh, I hope you take John's advice. You know, the board of selectmen are unanimous in saying this change needs to be made because it's in the charter. It's going to be a big deal. But in terms of the quality of your government, you know, you're helping yourself out. You're helping yourself out by just giving them the flexibility to get the best person to to uh, to uh, to act as their a, a, a executive assistant. So I hope you enjoy this presentation. Thank you very much, John. Folks, thank you for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Thank you.